What's going on Pixel Hackers? Christian Lovrasic from Pixel Feet here. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to lower your Facebook ads CPMs post iOS 14. But before we get started, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive right in. So, let's talk about CPMs. What are CPMs? What does CPM stand for? CPM stands for cost per mile or cost per 1,000. So that's how we measure the cost per 1,000 impressions. Now, some people call that a vanity metric. I can tell if an ad set or a campaign is gonna be a winner just by looking at the CPM when I launch a new campaign once I know the account inside out, right? Because at the end of the day, you want your campaign and your ad set or your ads to reach as many people as possible for the cheapest cost possible, right? So if you're launching a campaign, let's say you have uh, one campaign with two ad sets and one has a hundred dollar CPM and the other one has a five dollar CPM What are the chances that the hundred dollar CPM ad set is going to beat the one that has five? Uh, it could happen. It is possible, but you're only reaching a limited about the uh, amount of people So you want to reach as many people as possible So let me give you the tips of what I do since iOS 14 to bring that CPM as low as I can So I can reach as many people as possible. So number one this is a, this is this should be your number one priority no matter what. Target the right audience. People, a lot of people, a lot of you dropped the ball here. You guys don't like to take the time to create your perfect dream customer avatar. I see it with students, I see it with clients all the time. They literally just go in there, start typing interest, and just throw straight at the wall. They just throw straight at the wall. Well, yeah, if somebody likes dogs, you just like choose all the dogs' interests. You think that's going to be relevant to somebody that, yeah, they might have a dog, but it's not the right breed? So, for example, when you're doing your customer avatar, when you're creating a customer avatar, do your research. Who's your customer? Is it Susan that lives in Georgia and owns a French, uh, a French poodle, right? At that point, everything just comes, uh, you know, falls together when it comes to creative and everything else, making your ads more powerful. So make sure you're targeting your right audience. And now with audience insights gone, you know, you need, you really need to do it right. So get a tool like Connectio, link below in the description for a free trial, and it will pull all the interest for you from Facebook, and then you can really go through and behaviors and everything and see what matches better your audience best, right? That's just a suggestion. You don't have to get it, but that's just an easier way to do it. Uh, number two, broad, audiences right i know back in the day and it can be very tempting to go into your ad set level and start narrowing audiences with like frequent travelers or online shoppers or online shopping or you grab a broad audience and then you bring it down let's say you grab dogs and then you bring it down with frenchies uh that used to work really well back in the day but since the release of iOS 14, all of our audiences have shrunk. So we have to keep our audiences as big as possible. We need them in the millions. So the Facebook algorithm can do its job and have room to search for the perfect individual to, uh, to convert into the objective that you're giving them, whether it's a purchase, a lead, or add to cart, or whatever it is. So you gotta keep them broad. And how do we do that? Well, if you're using interest targeting, Make sure you're doing at minimum of 15 interests. I, I mean, some of my ad sets, I go up to like 30. 30, but highly picked out tar uh, interest targeting, right? But I uh, keep it broad at the same time by just putting all of them together and getting that audience well, well, well into the millions, right? So, uh, talking about broad, another thing you want to do, you want to take advantage of your lookalikes, right? So create lookalikes. That's a given. But this is what most of you are going to do. You're gonna create your purchase 180, zero to 1%, or you're gonna create your purchase 180, meaning 180 days, uh, zero to 10%, you're just gonna throw one in there. You need to stack your lookalikes. It's working really well. So for an example, you can, you can grab your purchase lookalikes and do zero to one, zero to two, zero to three, zero to four, stack them all together. Uh, you can mix them like, you know, add to cart 1% and uh, purchase 1% and, you know, uh, uh, add payment, mix them all together, but keep it super broad, super broad. There's other videos that I go more into details about this, but make sure you stack them together and create a massive, massive audience in the millions. Um, number four, uh, improve your ads, relevance, uh, score. Well, 
This is where your, your creative, believe it or not, your creative did takes part of your targeting. Your creative actually has more weight when it comes to targeting than the actually interest in your lookalike audiences themselves. So this is why it's very important that you really pay attention to your creatives and you tailor those creatives to speak directly to your customer avatar. So if I'm gonna create an ad, uh, you know, I wanna target uh, Susan who lives in Georgia and it's a French poodle, right? Well, I'm gonna find somebody uh, through, a, you know, I can use billion or limit creators. I'm gonna find someone that's in that age range that might look like Susan, depending on where she sh she shops all you know where she shops at, depending on her clothes and all that stuff. Because you can find all this out when you're doing your 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 customer research, and you know a French poodle, or whatever or whatever dog I said, and use that in your ad when you're presenting the product, right? Because that's what's going to resonate with the audience, right? So you want to make sure that your creative it's very relevant to your audience. The more relevant it is, along with the product the better your ads are going to be because Facebook is all about keeping everybody in the platform engaged. So that will bring you more engagement with which Facebook loves and it will, you know, shoot it through the roof, meaning your CPMs will go way down. Okay. Number five, test, 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 A, B testing. I cannot tell you how many times I have uh, uploaded campaigns and ad sets with the same exact audience, same exact targeting, same exact everything, but the only difference is it's either the copy or the creative itself. And then one has a, let's say, $30 CPM and the other one has a $7 CPM. So test, 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 A-B test your audiences, A-B test your creatives, A-B test everything. Detail expansion on, detail expansion off. Test every single variable one at a time just to see how that affects the cost in your CPMs. It's very, very important. Uh, number six, this is one that's really overlooked uh, by a lot of people, especially uh, new people, uh, frequency, right? So your frequency, if your frequency goes sky high, meaning frequency is the amount of times, the average amount of times that a person on Facebook is, is looking at your ad. So if your audience is small, this is why we have to go to broad audiences. If your audience is small, you know, your frequency is going to shoot up through the roof, 10, 20, 30. And guess what? When people get tired of, of looking at your ad and they don't engage with it, your, C your CPMs are going to go much higher because Facebook is going to bring the reach down, right? And those audiences are small. You might see this more often with retargeting audiences where your, C your CPM skyrockets if your frequency goes too high. Well, the only way to combat that is by spending more money at the top, bringing more visitors at the top to bring those costs and those CPMs down. But keep your frequency as low as you can at the top of the funnel. I like my frequency at the top of the funnel at a 1.5, maximum a three. I try not to let it go past a three because then it, that's just too much. You're gonna, you're gonna get ad fatigue at that point. Okay, uh, number seven, change your bid type. A lot of you, especially newbies, you like to rely on lowest cost. Yes, in an ideal, perfect world, I would love to use lowest cost for everything. But the reality and the truth of the matter that right now, things are all over the place post iOS 14, and now you gotta know your numbers. Figure out what your CPA is. Figure out what your average order value is. Test cost cap campaigns. Test bid cap campaigns. Test lowest cost. Test all three. I mean, test cost cap and bid cap with different bids based on your numbers, right? Uh, if you don't know cost cap, it's going to be Facebook's going to try to get the most uh, volume of sales 10% uh, uh, higher or lower than the bid that you give it. Bid cap is going to be your targeted bid. You're telling Facebook exactly what, how much you're willing to bid in the auction to get that sale. So that's a short, you know, explanation for it. But test all threes. All right. Uh, number eight, engagement. Remember how I told you guys that Facebook loves engagement? Well, the more engagement your ad gets, the higher it's gonna get kicked up to, to the feed, uh, and then your CPMs will be lower because it has, it's getting more interaction, right? It knows where to put it. It's gonna grab all that data and put it more in front of people that match that data. So try to be, again, creative with your creative ads. You know, ask a question in your ads before you ask for the call to action, or when you're creating the creative itself, make it funny. Make it, uh, make, put subliminal messages in it. 
uh, put like meaning you know a picture that looks like something it's not supposed to be like one time I saw an ad where like they, it was they were carving fruit and it looked like body parts if you know what I'm saying that really provoc provocative body parts and engagement was through the roof uh, my example that I like to use for this uh, that you know so people can get ideas is like you know when you're showing the ad or whatever uh, let's say you're doing an ad for a pizza uh, pizza joint you know everybody loves the discussion of uh, you know pineapple and pizza yes or not or if you're talking about cars, uh, cars Ford or Chevy if you're talking about computers you know Apple Microsoft that always stirs the pot right so let's say if you're doing an ad for food whoa what well you know our favorite topping in our pizzas usually is pineapple well when you start your sentence for with that or your hook or whatever it is somewhere in the ad guess what man that's gonna stir the pot and people are gonna let you know how they feel haters or not that drives engagement up which gives you lower CPM so just get creative with that stuff I just wanted to give you guys an example for that right uh, number nine again back to creative select the right creative if you have a product let's say you have a supplement that it's for weight loss right we all know that you can use before and after pictures but get creative with it show the results of the journey of using the product and when it gets you at but don't do just a you know before and after you know think about like uh oxyclean right like an, a product like oxyclean what do you think is going to work better for a product like oxyclean for those of you that don't know oxyclean is a product here in the states where like you can use it to clean anything in your house like and it doesn't damage anything and it'll get stains out of anything so what do you think it's going to be a work best with that type of product just a picture of the oxyclean uh product by itself like the actual product picture of the can or whatever it's called the container or a video showing the product and use the video showing showcasing the product and use that's a no-brainer so showcase your product show it in use show people enjoying it that's going to bring engagement up and that's going to make people to take action just a picture of the product by itself in a white background that's not going to do anything for you people are going to scroll right by it right another thing that i like to you to use it's um uh, pat uh, pattern interruptions at the beginning of videos like a filter or something that shakes up the screen or a broken screen glass or something that just catches their attention when you're scroll uh, when you're scrolling through so very important you know select the right type of creative for your uh, for your product uh, 10 this is probably one of the most important ones and is your customer feedback score or your page quality I think they call it page quality now guess what if that score drops below a three your ads are gonna go and cost like three times no matter what how do you get a bad score people not getting their products in time so long shipping times so they're gonna complain about the shipping or uh, you know when when Facebook sends a survey to people if you don't know if you're watching this you don't know this Facebook sends a survey to people who have purchased from you in the past and if they complain about anything at all like shipping times bad quality product bad quality service bad customer service uh, that's gonna drop your score from a five you start a five and it can only go down from there and if it goes below two you get banned so it's very very important that you take care of your customers and you take care of uh, everybody that has interacted with you in the comments and everything like that that way that score doesn't drop because your costs will go through the roof and last but not least and number 11 create a great offer that resonates I can't even type type I mean write uh, create a great offer that resonates with your audience the better the offer that matches your audience and your customer avatar the most likely they're going to engage where you're at and take action so guess what the quicker people click that button go to your site and take action and Facebook receive that feedback on the back end and say hey people are clicking on this or people are watching this video and taking action they're not only watching the video but they're buying they're like they're digging this this is a great product let's make more money all of us let's make more money so boom they're gonna they're gonna throw your ad up to the top of the feed and now you're gonna make more money Facebook's gonna make more money and your CPM's costs are gonna drop all the way to the ground all right guys I hope this helps 
If you guys want to keep learning more about digital media, Facebook ads in general, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Help support the channel and check out one of the videos right above me so you can keep learning. And I'll see you guys in the next video.